Seth, I've been told the day that I'll be able to get out of the hospital. They say that I'll be able to come back home in another three days. I see. On that day, I'll take the day off of work and come there to get you. You don't have to do that for me. They're going to call a taxi that allows wheelchairs to take me home in. Uh, Cammy, I'm so sorry. I'll do my best to support you in any way I can to help you get back on your feet, literally. You don't have to blame yourself too much over this. It was also my fault for dozing off while we were walking along. You being alert wouldn't have made any difference. It's all my fault for crossing that bridge behind you while looking at my phone the whole time. Because of that, I ran into your back at the stairs down the bridge and you tumbled all the way to the bottom. And because of that, you're in a wheelchair now. They never said anything about me never being able to walk again, though. The doctor said that as long as I continue my rehabilitation, there's a good chance that I'll be able to walk again. Well, that's just a possibility, right? Don't say that like it'll never happen, okay? I'm going to put my best foot forward to make sure that I can stand on both of my feet again. I'm sorry. And the other thing is it's lucky that this was all with you. If it was some random stranger that had done this to me, my mental state would be so much worse. I don't think so. Look, your legs are... Well, if you're going to be so upset by what's happened, then why don't you promise me to never do something like that again? The next time you do something like this to me, I won't be so kind to you. Of course. I'll never even look at my phone anymore while I'm walking. I'm so very sorry, Cammy. If you're understanding of my feelings, then we can stop talking about all of this and move on from it. Stop with all your pouting right now, and go back to being the cheerful man that I came to love. You are so strong, Cammy. Are you really not that upset with me right now? Well, you're my husband, Seth. Is there any point to me being upset with you now, after all that happened is in the past? But for a while now, you're not going to be able to walk. Whether I held anything against you or was angry with you, those emotions would never help me get my legs back. So that's why I'm going to let the past go and move forward to a life where I fight my hardest to get better. I'm going to keep moving forward and so should you. And that's very true, but... Uh, so now we're going back to this? I'm sorry. Hey, on the day I get out of the hospital, you really do not have to take the day off work. So you can come see me when you're out and we can celebrate. We can call it a celebration of me being released from this cold hospital room. Alright. Then on my way home from work, I'll get us a huge cake. Uh, what do you want to do for dinner that night? Hmm, I wonder if I'll be able to cook as well, now that I'm in a wheelchair. I think for a little bit I won't be able to make much at home. Then how about we order delivery of some kind? That's a great idea. I will have to be working on making the place more accessible to myself when I get back home. And so I wouldn't be able to get anything together for dinner anyway. So I'll order something while you're coming home to be delivered. If you need any help with anything, I'll help you move the furniture around when I get home. Thank you. But I'll let you know about all of that after I give living in a wheelchair a try to see how everything feels. Alright, I'll leave that up to you then. I'll do anything you need me to when I get home. Seth, can you make sure to buy some vinegar on your way home from work today? Uh, why do I have to? It's been raining all day, so I haven't been able to get out since it's hard to move in a wheelchair in the rain. Well, if you have bought yourself a poncho before, you would wear that and go. All you do is sit around at home every day now, so you have all day to go out and shop while I don't. I'm just asking you to buy me some vinegar. There are stores all along your drive home that you can stop at and grab some. Then I don't need any dinner from you tonight. I'll eat something on the way home. Huh? Why would you do that instead of just stopping at a store for two seconds? You ran out of vinegar. And you never bought yourself a rain poncho, so this is on you. I mean, I guess you could blame me for that. 
But saying that you'll eat out tonight because you don't want to buy a single bottle of vinegar is a bit strange. That's not the only reason for me staying out to eat. Coming back home to you always getting in my way is such a pain. Getting in your way? I don't think it's okay to say that about me. Your stinking wheelchair is huge and blocks everything. I feel that being at home with you around is starting to raise my blood pressure. I can't do anything about that though. I wouldn't be able to go anywhere without the wheelchair. Who was the one that said that they put their best foot forward to be able to walk again? And when you said there was a chance of walking again, was that a lie? Don't say that to me. I said there's a chance that I will be able to walk again as long as I keep going to rehab. That wasn't me saying that I will walk anytime soon. And I'm still going to rehab every day almost, and I have no plans of giving up anytime soon. You are so full of it. You have everything handed to you because you're disabled and the victim. And anytime you want to go somewhere with me, I have to push you around and at home I'm always forced to care for you. I'm putting in so much work and it's all for nothing. You're saying that helping me is supposed to have merits or something? Do you not remember that me having to live in this wheelchair is because of you? And we promised to never bring that up again, right? Sorry. But with everything you're saying to me right now, it's making me really sad. At first you were saying you'd always be around to support me. But now, you've slowly been getting colder and more distant from me. And while you've been distancing yourself, I've still been putting in 110%. Don't tell me that you've been putting in that much effort. I don't see any results from whatever effort you speak of. I have to sacrifice my life to take care of a defective woman now. So I think you better try harder to make some of this up to me. Defective woman? You've been thinking of me like that? Well, you can't walk now, can you? And when I'm not around, you can't do anything, and when it rains, you can't even get out of the house. Even if you were still normal like the rest of us, then you'd be able to handle yourself. I never wanted to hear that from you. What? Are you going to start blaming me some more? I've done my best to stay quiet and never mention anything about wanting a divorce, all while taking care of you. You want to get a divorce? Of course I want to. But both of your parents and my parents would tear me a new one if I were to mention anything like that to them. So I have to be responsible for everything now. But not if I'm going to keep being blamed for every little thing. So you've been staying around me so that I wouldn't get angry with you? I'm tired of this. Talking to you is awful. You'd be the one getting screwed the most, so why don't you just shut up and let me be for now? Seth! Don't you think you should come home right after work so that you and I can talk about all of this more? But it's a freaking pain having to talk to you. I'm going to do what I have to, okay? So stop trying to talk to me about anything, because I do not have the patience for it. But if you can't keep yourself quiet and keep coming at me with all your complaints, then I'm going to leave you for good. I know you're the victim, so you can just shut up about it already. Seth, I have something I'd like to talk about. Do you think you can come home as soon as you get out of work? I don't think so. I have a lot of work that just keeps stacking up and so I don't think I'll be home tonight. You've never had to work that late while working for that company before though. And I was doing the same sort of job you're doing now, so I know that it doesn't get that busy. Well, I don't think you understand this company. But my dad is working in the same kind of company as you and says that this is not the busy season even for you guys. Stop trying to compare what this company has to get done with whatever his company is doing. Right now everyone here is very busy and has a lot of things to handle. So we're not even going to be able to have a normal discussion anymore, huh? We don't have anything to discuss, do we? Well, I do. Then you can tell me right here, right now on the phone. I'll take a look at what you have to say later after you're done typing. Then I guess I'll let you know right now. Seth, you've been cheating on me, right? Huh? What? Do you have any proof of that? I found a letter in one of your suit pockets. It was from Valentine's Day, and it had some things written on the inside of it. What the heck? You're going to start doubting me because of that? I just happen to be really popular with a lot of the women around town. So every year I happen to get a lot of Valentine's Day letters and cards from them. 
but this one is asking what hotel you want to stay at next time on it. This would mean that you're cheating on me, right? I don't know anything about that. I bet whoever was writing that was doing so as a joke or something. Stop trying to tell me that that letter is enough proof to say that I'm really cheating on you. So after all the times you've been staying outside of the house these past few months, you're going to try and hide the truth from me now? I'm not trying to hide anything from you though, Cammy. You already know that if I'm to throw you away, your life will be over, right? You're still in that crappy wheelchair, and you've gotten old. I don't think there are any men that will be willing to marry a defect like you now. So even if you were to find out that I've been cheating on you, you wouldn't be able to divorce me. And that's why I'm saying you don't have to try hiding that from me anymore. You could have just told me that you knew about the letter in your suit pocket, and we could have carried on from there. Well, you can't consider some letter that I get all the time from random women as proof. You're freaking out so much right now that I'm having a laugh. What do you want to do about this? Do you want me to tell you that I'm cheating just so that you can feel something again after sitting in that thing for so long? So you have been cheating on me then? I've had to live with a crippled woman. So don't act as though me having some other woman around to play with is such a bad thing. You're such a jerk, Seth. I understand very well now that you're not the same Seth that I fell in love with. A mess up as bad as you had nowhere else to go but hell. Shut up already, Cammy. I've been trying so hard to have a life of my own. You've always gotten in the way of it. And because you fell down those stairs, I have to be the one to care for your butt. I didn't volunteer for this job, Cammy. I've said this a lot now, but you should be thankful that I haven't thrown you away yet. I'm not thankful for you at all now. Don't you say another freaking word. If you try and talk back to me again, I will seriously leave you. A piece of crap in a wheelchair like you needs to shut the hell up and listen to me. Calling me a piece of crap is pretty brave of you, Seth. But I can walk again. Huh? You can walk now? Yeah. I've been able to stand up now on my own for over a month. And as long as I have some things to support myself with, I'm able to walk. Stop trying to give me such BS lies. Just a few days ago, you were still in that wheelchair. That's because I didn't want you knowing that I could walk again. I wanted to take a little bit longer to find a lot of good evidence of you cheating on me. So I played the part of a cripple for just a few more days. What? If you had known that I was able to walk again, you might have stopped going out with those other women. And I would have missed my chance to get heart proof. And having you come back home all the time again would have annoyed me. I also didn't want you trying to change back the Seth you used to be before the accident. But for over half of a year you weren't able to walk. Are you actually able to start walking again that quickly? You're shocked right now, aren't you? Even the doctors were shocked to see me walking again so quickly. Have you really been able to walk again? That's why I'm telling you right now that I have. If you don't believe me, then come home right now and see for yourself. I see. All right, I'll be home as soon as I can after work. And we're going to be talking about getting a divorce tonight, okay? Wait, what the hell? You were finally able to walk again and you want to get a divorce deal? Are you saying that since you don't need a wheelchair anymore, you don't have a use for me? Hmm. <laughs> Why should I have to continue being married to the man that cheated on me with multiple other women? You have it all wrong now, Cammy. You were just a bit upset right now and, and are overthinking things about what you saw. Did I ever say to you that I was actually cheating on you? Why do you think I've been so quiet about things for the longest time now? I told you that I was using that time to make sure I got all the evidence I needed. And that's a lot more than just this letter. Me wanting to leave you now isn't because I can walk again. I've been getting ready to divorce way before I was able to stand again. And another thing, these texts are being viewed by both your mom and dad right now. My parents? Why them? Why are you doing this? Because I knew I was going to be divorcing you for a long time now. I made sure to do all of this so that you couldn't run away from me. And not just that, but also my mom and dad are watching this conversation play out. So I think it's best you stop trying to make excuses for things and just come home. And remember that there's no use in trying to run now, so just come here after your work is finished and we can move on with things. I'm not going to run or hide from you. 
so don't try doing that with me. Cammy, please. Can you please come back home? I can't. I'm busy with a lot of things now. I have to get a lot of my things ready to move out, and I need to stop by a few different places to work on some legal things. I left that last girl that I was with, though. Is that right? Can, so can you please come back and try to make up with me? I want to help you with your rehab again, and I want to make things as smooth as they can be for you as you transition back to walking on your own. Are you not embarrassed by saying things like that to me? Have you forgotten why this is all happening in the first place and how you treated me a few days ago? I think that I was a real jerk back then. I know that I was, and it's not okay. So then you should know that something like that, making up, isn't going to work. I'm sure this is going to sound like more excuses to you, but those times were hard for me as well. Huh? I have been blaming myself ever since the day I put you in that wheelchair due to my negligence. And having to come home to see you in that wheelchair every time was torture. And so I just couldn't manage my feelings about you and what happened any longer, and things happened because of that. So that's why you started to say terrible things to me and cheat on me with other women? And went and did things on your own without even telling me? Deep down I never wanted to do any of those things. It's just that after seeing you like that all the time, I wasn't able to control what I did and said. I'm done here. At this point talking to you any longer will make me blow a fuse. I want to hand in those divorce papers soon, so please sign them. If you don't have them signed by the middle of this week, I'll have to take all of this to the court and have it settled there. Wait a second. I told you that I don't want to get divorced. Did I ever say that I cared what you think? And didn't you threaten me before the divorce saying that if you let me, I'd be done for? Uh, that wasn't meant to be taken seriously. You don't want to get a divorce now because my dad had to sit down and say a few things to you, right? You both work in the same field, and he would begin to start saying things about you that might threaten your career, right? And what makes things worse for you is that your boss is best friends with my dad ever since college. That's not why I don't want a divorce. Then why? Are you upset that I found out about you cheating on me and don't want to pay the settlement for that? Ah, uh, maybe it's that and everything else. You're afraid that if others find out about this that you've been involved with, they'll start to come after you. I'm sorry. I'm really so sorry for everything. I really dropped the ball on our whole relationship by doing all those crappy things, so... So I'll never do anything like that again. So give me another chance. I think I've given you plenty of chances already, don't you? The reason for me wanting this divorce right now isn't because I've finally become able to walk again. You starting to become distant from me and cold caused me to start to think. And when you kept on calling me crippled, and in your way I didn't try to fight back because I was giving you the chance to come back. I wanted you to warm up again to me and close that distance you made. Cammy, I'm so sorry. But with every chance I gave you, you only became more and more hateful towards me. You then started to run away with other women and would really get heated when I tried to say anything to you. And when I was having a tough time, you were never at my side to help me feel better. You had plenty of time to make things right with all the chances I gave you before my love for you went cold. I really am the worst man alive. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It's too late for that game now. No, Cammy. What am I going to do if you divorce me now? There's nobody that's going to come and help me after this. Cammy, please help me. Please. When I needed you to help me, you were off making love to other women and calling me horrible things. Now I don't feel a dang thing for you. It wasn't just my legs that you ended up hurting. You did a far worse job to my heart, and it'll take forever to heal from that than what happened with my legs. If you really do feel sorry for what you did to me, then you can apologize by never talking to me again. A few days after all of that, I received the divorce papers in the mail signed by my husband. I think after a few days of not talking to me and cooling off, he started to realize what he'd done by hurting me so much. But all of that hate from him, and the amount of times he cheated on me, was unforgivable. 
so me leaving him for good was the right option, I think. And another thing that's really caused me so much pain was that he threatened me by saying that if he divorced me, I'd never make it because I was in a wheelchair. I really thought that he was the kind of man that understood the pain I was in after the accident. But he never once actually thought about how I felt. I'm sure that things like this happen a lot with families, and having a family member end up in a bad accident where they can't walk anymore. But I think that most would come together after the shock and make sure that the afflicted is supported for however long it takes for them to heal. I feel though that had I not been paralyzed from the waist down, there would be some point in which Seth's true character would come out and cause a divorce. After the divorce, my dad did not hesitate to tell a lot of people about the kind person Seth is. And since then, he's been walking a thin line when going out to work. And I've heard that the last woman he had cheated on me happened to be one of his co-workers. And so when that was figured out, his salary was cut and he had to go on unpaid leave for a bit while HR dealt with things. For someone that cared so much about himself and nobody else, he's really let himself go through all of his actions. Three months after the divorce had happened, things had become so harsh for him that he ended up quitting his job at the company. And anybody that knew him stopped hanging out with him because they all looked down on him for what he'd done. And so I don't really hear anything anymore about what's happening to him. But I think it's over for Seth, and he'll never be able to return to the life he had a year ago before the accident. And I've already gotten my half of the properties in the divorce from him, as well as my settlement, so there's nothing else I need to know or hear from that man. I don't even care about how he's going to survive now, without a job or much money, and I shouldn't have to, right? I've been lucky enough to get back in touch with the company I worked for before the accident, and they've allowed me to start working again from home. And because all of my friends and people that my dad has introduced me to, I've been able to stay busy with work and my life, and haven't had to worry about having food to eat or a house to live in. But I'm still very reliant on having my cane to be able to walk. So I'm still going to rehab to make sure that my muscles grow stronger and my mind stronger as well. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to freely walk without some kind of tool ever again, but I'm going to keep on training in hopes that one day I can. Even if the potential for that is really low, if I keep on putting in a lot of work, the chances will continue to grow for me. And along with that, I'm going to keep trying my best to maintain the life I've been given now. And will never forget all the strength I've had to make it this far already.